financial problems, elder law, tax problems, business matters, divorce, personal injury, bankruptcy, your life, your reality. Life is complicated. There is the law and there is reality. Welcome to Law and Reality, sponsored by Thav Gross. Now, here's your host, Ken Gross. Welcome to this segment of Law and Reality. Today's show is Can I Get Disability? Brian Small, good morning. Good morning, Ken. Always a pleasure to be here. Jeffrey Kirshner. Glad to be here and we're glad to. We're talking about disability today, and, buddy. You better I'm, be on your game. I'm on my A game and I'm going to solve your problems. Pat Samasco. I'm here to listen and learn. All right, so I want, I want to introduce you to Fred Williams. These are fictitious. I have a Fred Williams. Victim client. of the day. <laughs> He's age 55. He owns Williams Lawn and Snow LLC. They're in the snow, they do snow removal in the winter, landscaping and cutting grass uh, the rest of the year. He has several truck loans with Ford Credit. He's got a credit line with Chase Bank. He owes $50,000 in credit card debt. He's spreading it around, isn't he? He makes <laughs> $8,000 a month. His mortgage payment's nineteen fifty. dollars He's got about $25,000 of equity in his home. It was underwater, but it's come up a bit. He has an IRA with hundred grand in it. He's got savings of $5,000. Life is okay, and then disaster hits. He's trying to fix the snowblade on his Ford F-150 truck, and it crush, falls and crushes his leg totally. Just awful. His income goes from $8,000 a month to $3,500 a month. He, he has to hire someone to do his work, run the business. He's now passive. He can't work. He's short $4,500 a month, and he needs that money to live on. I see lots of issues here that we've got to work through, not only with you, Jeff, but with you, Brian. What can he collect in terms of workers' comp, social security disability, and what should he do about his debt? So let's start with Jeff. Workers' comp, is he covered? Well, most likely he is covered, although if he is self-employed, uh, he would not be covered. If he is a sole proprietorship, then he is not covered. But if he's a corporation, uh, he can then be covered. Employees are covered if you are an employer or, or you are not covered, just like independent contractors. So I own, I own my, I'm Fred, I own my own business. Right. I'm the president, I'm the sole shareholder. So I'm not, I'm not self-employed from the standpoint of the act because I'm not a sole proprietorship. So I'd be covered so, unless what? Well, wait, let me just make sure everybody understands. Sole proprietorship, DBA, doing business as. You don't have, you haven't formed a corporate entity of any type. You're, you're just not a partnership. out there, you're just like going from house to house, plowing snow. And, and, and Which we'll do another show on, cor on, on, on business formations. You shouldn't operate as a sole proprietorship ever. It's always a mistake. But right. So in this case, so I own my business. I'm the shareholder. If I, I can exempt myself. You can exempt yourself. And if you exempt yourself, the positive thing is, is that you pay less in premiums. But if you exempt yourself, you better then go out and buy a private policy. You need something to cover yourself in a work-related accident and therefore... Uh, you should cover yourself, but you can make that economic decision to purchase your own policy. All right, so let's go road A and road B. Road A says, I exempted myself. I didn't want to pay the workers' comp premium myself. If that happens, the answer is no soup for Fred. Well, no soup, no no soup for, for comp, except that typically you see uh, those people do buy private policies, just like independent contractors who aren't considered employees, so they're not covered by whoever they're working for, so have, have, a, have a private disability policy. Okay. Correct. All right. And then if I didn't exempt myself, then I can get what? Then, then you're entitled to workers' compensation. So but let's assume that's what happened. Fine. Then there's three elements to workers' compensation, three benefits. One benefit we're not even going to talk about is vocational rehabilitation. If you can't go back and do what you had been trained to do, uh, possibly for some schooling or having a counselor help you find a job, that really doesn't exist much anymore. And it's a complicated answer. Right but, now, my leg is smashed to smithereens. Right. So let's talk about the two main benefits that people are always talking about. The first one is medical. 
from the moment you have an injury, whether you miss a minute of work and come right back to work, or you never go back to work again, for any work-related injury, you're entitled to reasonable and necessary medical treatment. For the first 28 days, the employer can dictate where you treat. After those 28 days, as long as you're seeing a legitimate doctor and the treatment is reasonable and necessary, you can treat wherever you want. Hey, if Fred's the employer, can he then go wherever he wants or does he have to go where the insurance company is? It's dictated it? by the insurance company. Okay. So it's really not dictated by the employer, it's the insurance company because at the end of the day, it's really the insurance company that's paying the premiums. So you've got medical and it covers everything, whether it be uh, hospitalizations, surgeries, prescriptions, even mileage to and from medical appointments. How long does so that go medical. for? Medical can be a lifetime benefit. All workers' compensation actually can potentially be a lifetime benefit. More times than not, either people go back to work or if you've got a person on benefits for a long period of time, uh, cases eventually do settle out, but potentially they can be a lifetime benefit. So right now, we don't know when he's going back to work. It's, it's looking dim from the standpoint of ever being able to do what he did Right. as doing cutting lawn and snow removal. It doesn't look like he's going to be able to drive. or He's not, he's not going to have the use of that leg, it looks like. Right. So you've got a second benefit, though, under workers' compensation to talk about is the wage loss benefit. If Essentially, if you're off for two weeks or longer, you're entitled to approximately 80% of your net average weekly wage in terms of your wage loss benefits for every week that you're off of work. Is that taxable? That is non-taxable. So it's 80%. So, it, so it's 80% uh, it's of your net so it pays less than your wages, but it's non-taxable. At the end of the day, though, you end up making more money if you're working than if you're on comp. But the nice thing is, is that it is tax-free. So he owned his own business, and he's now short forty-five hundred a month. Would he be able to get eighty percent of the forty-five hundred? Yes. Okay. And right, we'll take a break. When we come back, I got more questions on that. Is the debt piling up? Struggling to get by? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. When it's right, it's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt. But you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Thav Gross. You don't need to be broke and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Fav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. A lifetime of hard work. If you don't have the right plan in place, you can lose your home, your savings, and more. And you didn't come this far to lose everything. Samasco Law wants you to know that laws are changing. Today, the average cost of nursing home care is $85,000 a year. With proper planning, we can help protect your life savings and get you the Medicaid and nursing home benefits you deserve. How much can you afford to lose? Call Samasco Law today. If you're retired and in a financial crisis, there is a way out. It pains me when I see a retired couple exhaust their savings by paying credit card bills and for a home hopelessly underwater. Fav Gross specializes in helping retired people in financial crisis. You just can't keep paying until you're broke. You need to address the problem now. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. You can't work. You have to deal with pain and stress. Worse yet, our system for applying for disability benefits seeks to deny you the benefits you're entitled. Jeff Kirshner is an expert in obtaining disability and workers' compensation benefits for his clients. You need to call Jeff before you apply or after you're denied to get the benefits you deserve. 888-235-HELP. 888-235-HELP. All right, so hey, by the way, when I was looking at workers' comp, Lara, that's the site for the state of Michigan, has a good Q&A section on the website. If anyone's interested, just Google L-A-R-A, Frequently Asked Questions, Workers' Compensation Agency, and you get good information. But here's my question. So Fred's injured. He's suffering a $4,500 a month loss in earnings. He might be able to get 80%. When does he need a lawyer? I just get the instinct that says the workers' comp 
insurance company is not going to write him a check for 80% or $4,500 for the next 20 years. No. Somewhere there's going to be a problem. The, there, there, there typically is in those scenarios. You even think that clear of a case that the insurance company would just do what they should do. But that's why I have a job. Because more times than not, insurance companies still don't do what you want them to do. They're still going to dispute whether or not the incident happened in the course and scope of his employment. Maybe he was using it for private use. So they raised maybe that issue. Maybe he was shoveling the snow on his driveway. Well, that's, that's, that's always what they look at because of where he was. And then they go into, well, is he really that injured? Is a crush really a crush? Well, let's send him to a doctor of our choice for a one-time evaluation. And lo and behold, they get a doctor with a conservative view that all of a sudden, the 10 treating doctors are wrong. The one-time evaluator is right and his problems aren't as bad they send the him treatment. to Dr. No Leg Crush. Yes. And well familiar no, with him. Dr. No Leg Crush says this leg is not crushed. Familiar with Dr. No Soup for you. Yes. You know, can I ask one too that it seems like when you have the smaller businesses and if they're maybe not making as much, it seems like a lot of times one of the first payment that's not going to be made is to the workers' comp insurance. And if you have a lot of these employees that are just coming on, they need to make sure that the company is insured because if they get their leg crushed, and they're not insured, what's their recourse? Well, the recourse is they could still pursue a workers' compensation claim, but the problem is then that the employer is uninsured. And good luck getting after an uninsured employer because then you've got to get a judgment in, in comp, then you've got to get it enforced over in circuit court, and what uh, assets do the people really have? Are you going to buy them the truck and sell it and, and get money. And ultimately, is there a fund from the state that they can collect in that circumstance? So there's, an uninsured, there, yeah. there's an uninsured fund, too. But the, but the employer who doesn't have the insurance is actually committing a crime. Does that's the, right. That, that, well, that's since, a criminal since we know that that happens all the time, regardless, does the uninsured fund from the, through the state pay the equivalent of what yes. the, the workman's compensation right. would be? Right. You know, you know where we <laughs> see it all the time, and it's, it sounds funny, but in the elder law world, you always wants the lady down the street to come in and pay her 10 bucks an hour to take care of grandma. And if you hire her and she picks grandma up and she breaks her back trying to help her, that's got to be a worker's comp case. She, you hired her or she's an yeah. independent contractor. Because if you're a sole proprietor Typically. and you have employees, they're in, they have to be insured. Typically, if you have someone come down the street to help, they're typically not employees. Well, you're they're, paying them, though. You're paying them, but still, in those type of scenarios, where you're hiring, hey, come over and do something for me for a one-time gig, it's it's tantamount to being an independent contractor. But so there is no employer-employee. it's a recurring thing, and I want you there 9 to 5 every day. Well, then if you start getting more of an employment relationship, then you go to... Um, whether or not there's a 20 point test to see whether or not somebody was an employee right. versus an independent contractor. All right, well, let's. What, what about Fred? What about disability insurance? Social Security disability. He's been paying in all these years. Can he get Social Security disability now? Sure, he can. Uh, with regard to that Social Security or benefits for people who are unable to work for 12 months or longer. So early on in the game, we don't know where Fred is going to be, although we have a good likelihood that he's not, not going to be able to do much. Good. And based on his age, once you hit age 50, there's some regulations that come into play that make it a little bit easier to get benefits. And when you're age 55, a little bit easier in age 60. He's at 55, so he's in a pretty good age to apply for Social Security. Let, let's, let's make this the leg is now powder example. It's been crushed. You're not going to take bone powder and reconstitute it into a usable leg. No, but most people are partially disabled, not totally disabled. People still He's got have, another leg. have a residual wage earning capacity. They may be able to, he may be able to do other things potentially. More likely than not, he's not going to be able to. His injury sounds very severe. Um, so Does he still have to wait a year? Well, no, it's, it's for a year or longer that you can't work, but so you can apply for Fred, Fred's the owner of the company. Fred was managing the business, right? and Fred was operating in the business. He was driving a truck when, when snow needed to be plowed. Until Fred, the accident. Now, Fred can't drive a truck anymore because his right leg is gone and, and it's not conducive to what he's going to be able to do is not drive a truck. But he could still manage the business. Does he qualify for well, anything? That, that's, that's the problem. That's kind of the catch here. A couple of things is they look at uh, residual skills, what you can do. But also in this type of scenario, you, your premise is that he's still making some money from the business. It's got to be that the money is purely 
passive income. He can't be doing anything with regard to the business other than getting profits from the business. So he can be a shareholder, a but he needs to bring in a new person as the president and the board to run the company? Correct. He can't not only not drive the truck, but he can't be doing the books or anything else that would, that would be considered earned income for so him. So conceptually, he's got to be just sitting there like he owns stock in GM and he's getting a dividend. Absolutely. If, if, the, if you can establish, uh, establish that, then the money coming in doesn't count as... Is that, is that kind income. of a gray area of debate at times? It I is mean, a gray area of debate and something I mean, that... As, as the business lawyer, I can do the documents and say, Fred, you're no longer president. Jerry's president. Jerry's the board. You're not on the board of directors. You're not an officer. You get no salary. No salary for you. But then Fred may be telling Jerry what to do on the phone, but who knows? Well, no documentation. It's is kind what, of a, is that what the fight is usually about? It, it it can be in those considerations a gray area. So you've got to kind of it's not walk great it for Social Security. <laughs> well, it's, it's not, and, and we do have hearings where we have to establish proof that in fact they're not taking any role. The point is, you it's an issue that you need to plan for and address properly in order to maximize Fred's chance of getting of, of being able to collect. And you got to work fast because the mortgage payments still do, the truck payments still How do. How long before the... Fred will see money from Social Security? Well, it could take a little while. Uh, again, back to applying for benefits, they have to be convinced you're not going to be able to work for 12 months or longer. When you apply more times than not on the initial application, you get denied. So then you have to ask for a hearing, which takes another 16 months. You're, you're looking about 18 to 20 months before you actually see money on the case. All right, we come back from the break and say, what does he do about his financial problem? We'll be back after the break. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Thav Gross. We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Thav Gross today, 888-235-HELP. A lifetime of hard work. If you're approaching retirement and don't have the right plan in place, you can lose your home, your investments, and your savings. And you didn't come this far to lose everything. Putting a solid strategy in place with Samasco Law legally protects your assets as well as your wishes. Since a will doesn't cover you medically or financially, Samasco Law goes beyond ordinary asset management protection to safeguard everything you have. How much can you afford to lose? Call Samasco Law today. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Thav Gross. You don't need to be broke and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Thav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. You can't work. You have to deal with pain and stress. Worse yet, our system for applying for disability benefits seeks to deny you the benefits you're entitled. Jeff Kirshner is an expert in obtaining disability and workers' compensation benefits for his clients. You need to call Jeff before you apply or after you're denied to get the benefits you deserve. 888-235-HELP. 888-235-HELP. If you're retired and in a financial crisis, there is a way out. It pains me when I see a retired couple exhaust their savings by paying credit card bills and for a home hopelessly underwater. Thav Gross specializes in helping retired people in financial crisis. You just can't keep paying until you're broke. You need to address the problem now. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. Time for announcements. I want to remind our viewers to listen to us Tuesdays, 11.30 a.m. and Saturdays, 7 a.m. for Law & Reality Live on Praise 102.7 FM. Then on Thursdays from 3 to 4 for Law & Reality Now on 9.10 a.m. Be sure and sign up for our monthly contest. Free $50 Visa gift card, Law & Reality hat, and copy of my book, Dump Your Debt. Just go to the websites, click on the link, and you can sign up for the uh, free contest. We have a seminar coming up Wednesday, March 28th, 6 to 7.30 p.m. Spring is the time to shed the debt, not trim it. 
This is our next debt relief seminar and it focuses on how to preserve future income for you and your family, all the key methods we use to avoid debt, to eliminate it so that you can preserve future income, bankruptcy solutions outside of bankruptcy. We're going to have a special segment from Jeff Kirshner talking about the basic elements of addressing a disability and a worker's compensation claim. Attendees get a free copy of my book, Dump Your Debt. Sign up at lawnreality.com, thavgross.com, or call 888-235-HELP. Also, I want to remind you, you're always free to come into Thav Gross for a free consultation. Just go to the websites, lawnreality.com or thavgross.com. Click on the particular area of interest that you have, and we'll arrange a free consult, or you can call 888-235-HELP. Also, go to the websites for the free reports. A uh, free report on how to avoid foreclosure, Social Security by Pat Samasco, and Business Formations and Loans and Grants for Small Businesses in Michigan. Now back to the show. Is the debt piling up? Struggling to get by? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. When it's right, it's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt. But you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. You can't work. You have to deal with pain and stress. Worse yet, our system for applying for disability benefits seeks to deny you the benefits you're entitled. Jeff Kirshner is an expert in obtaining disability and workers' compensation benefits for his clients. You need to call Jeff before you apply or after you're denied to get the benefits you deserve. 888-235-HELP. 888-235-HELP. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Thav Gross. You don't need to be broke and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, Dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Fav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. A lifetime of hard work. If you're approaching retirement and don't have the right plan in place, you can lose your home, your investments, and your savings. And you didn't come this far to lose everything. Putting a solid strategy in place with Samasco Law legally protects your assets as well as your wishes. Since a will doesn't cover you medically or financially, Samasco Law goes beyond ordinary asset management protection to safeguard everything you have. How much can you afford to lose? Call Samasco Law today. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Thav Gross. We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Thav Gross today, 888-235-HELP. All right, so Fred's got a problem. Yes. He has a potential claim to collect workers' comp. He's got a potential claim to collect Social Security disability. But this we know. He's got $50,000 of credit card debt. He's got like a $1,900 mortgage payment. And he's now $3,500 a month short. Brian, what does he do? Does he just tap out his IRA because he's got $5,000 in savings and keep paying his bills while he waits for Jeff to rescue him and get his workers' comp money and his Social Security, which could take some time. Right. If the insurance company disputes the comp claim, then it's going to take some time. Social Security, you're looking probably on average 16, 18 months before he'd see any money. If he well, takes out of the IRA, it's a tax penalty as well because he's not 59 and a half. He's not disabled. So, so here's the deal. Jeff, Jeff has got to explore the opportunity to look at a Chapter 7 bankruptcy. He's got debts that on their face would be dischargeable. His income has dropped sufficiently so that he's going to qualify for a Chapter 7. The concerns we have, of course, include does his business have value? Does he have too much equity in his home to qualify for a Chapter 7? Well, let's say he's married. If he's married, so, so he's got 25000 of equity. So we can issue? protect the equity in the home because you, you can protect up to $22,500 uh, per, per person. 
equity in your home as a married couple. In Michigan, we have some other, we have some private uh, Michigan right, exemptions so that allow us to he's even protect He's probably okay more. on the house. Yeah. Okay. The business could be a problem. If he's still making $3,500 a month not working, that means there's value in the business. There might be. There might not be. I mean, but he owes a lot of money. He's got a lot of debt. The question is, is how much debt does the business have? Well, the credit line's a couple hundred thousand dollars. So if you look at the value of the business, one of the advantages to filing a Chapter 7 for Jeff here in this situation would be... It's not Jeff. Jeff is his lawyer. Fred. Fred. I'm the one in the cape being <laughs> Superman. Sad. All right. Anyway, Superman. One, of the, one of the advantages for Fred to file the Chapter 7 is not only will he eliminate his credit card debt and his hospital bills and any other personal debt, he'll actually eliminate the personal guarantees on those business lines of credit that he's, that he's made. So now... His business, which is still operating, is still Unless owes money. Unless they call the loans. Well, they, 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 Can they, he they, use unlikely that they will because he's still paying those loans. So those loans are being paid, but he, now in case the business does fail down the road, they can't come after Fred for his personal for, liability. What happens when he starts using the credit cards and jacking up and pulling more money out of the equity lines of the business because he can't be making his payments? And then he files bankruptcy. Is there going to be an issue on a cl uh, clawback or a so, so, so there, there could be if you, uh, technically, if you so borrow money. So that question is, do I take it out of the IRA or do I use more credit card Hang debt? on to that no. IRA. We're no, no, hang on to your IRA because none of your creditors can ever touch it. That's and the from point. the standpoint of taking money out of the business lines of credit, at some point those are going to become maxed out anyway, and the odds are that if he's sitting in front of me looking for a bankruptcy, I'm telling him, don't touch him anymore. Because once we get Fred through a bankruptcy, his business can afford to pay his ongoing expenses. And he will then, instead of being $1,550 short on his income, he'll, 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 be, close be, he'll be close to break even. And then and, Jeff will come in with the rescue. Yeah, yeah and, but, and, but it's all got to be done in, in a job. timely Thank fashion. You. you want to do the bankruptcy yeah. before you get Let's awarded the workers' comp. Let's suppose you didn't comp. owe a lot of money on the credit line and the value had, and or the, the, business had, the business had value and you concluded he couldn't file a Chapter 7. In that case, then we would probably say to him, whatever you do, don't pay the credit cards because you don't have the cash flow. We can settle the credit cards, do debt resolution outside of bankruptcy, hang on to the IRA. And if we're not going into bankruptcy, we're not as concerned about using the credit cards until we stop paying them. But in bankruptcy, it's a problem. If you know you're going to file bankruptcy and use the credit cards, you're committing a fraudulent act, and then it can be excluded from the bankruptcy, That's right? That's true. So you've got to be careful. Here's the biggest lesson for Fred. He's in a bad situation. He's had a horrible event occur. He's focused on, he's, he's hit with an income loss. He's lost the use of his leg. He has two things he needs to focus on at the same time. He has to focus on taking the steps to, re, to receive as much income as he can get, and he has to focus on the debt. Too often in that circumstance, the guy focuses on getting back the disability income that he's getting the income he needs, but he keeps paying the debts, and he shouldn't. He has to hang on to his savings. He's got to take a plan to survive, and he's got to be smart. Have a great week. We'll be back next week with Law and Reality.